Huzzah. All right, welcome everyone to the introduction to Sydney Uni's uh, Research Cloud, as it's called. Um, today, we're going to learn all about this cloud platform and, and give some sort of broad overview for what it is and also um, how to use it as well. And you can see if it will fit into your research needs and your compute needs. Um, so we'll see how we go. So I'm from the Sydney Informatics Hub. I'm Nathaniel Butterworth. And uh, also online, we have Chris and Tom, and they will be covering any questions in the, the chat and everything as needed. Uh, so we provide all kinds of training and um, expertise in, in informatics research um, throughout the Sydney Informatics Hub. So the training is one part of our outreach program and the way that researchers engage with us, but we also do hands-on sort of projects, management and collaborations with people as needed. If you find you you might be missing uh, some of the, the 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 analysis needs in your your research group, you can come to us and we can um, work with you to to get those papers published. That's our our goal. But yeah, we do lots of um, workshops and training. So you probably found us through one of the email links or something that we've sent out, and um, not just on on cloud computing, but um, uh, our group specializes in the Artemis HPC, so anything sort of around research computing and uh, compute platforms we, we will um, run training on, and so we're always open to suggestions, but we also do lots of data science and statistics training as well, so plenty of that um, to go around. Alrighty, so let's uh, kick off. Today we are talking all about the Ronin Research Cloud. Now I'll use a couple words here. Um, and I'll repost this link in the chat. Everything I say today will be basically, um, it, it's basically written down here. So if I'm going too fast or uh, you know you forget something, like it, it's it's all in the documentation um, that you can come back to later. And apparently people have access to it now. So that, that sounds good that it has been resolved. Um, yeah, as I mentioned before, there was an issue where this page went um, private for some reason and it should be uh, public to the internet. And uh, on this documentation site, there are, um, there's documentation about not just our, our research cloud, but also the um, research data storage, uh, the Artemis HPC, the Argus um, virtual research desktops. So some of these you may have heard of um, and others maybe not, but today we're talking all about the research cloud. And basically what this is, it's uh, a, a virtual machine for you to kind of control and be the administrator of um, that lives in in the AWS, so Amazon Web Services Cloud. So in their various data centers, um, we have this this link to um, to to their platform. And if you've ever used AWS directly, it can be quite kind of uh, overwhelming and confusing. Lots of different configuration options, and so Ronan. Uh, who we'll log on to in a second. Here we go. This is our gateway to the um, to the platform. I'll post this link in the chat, but you probably won't be able to get through it unless you have a um, uh, an account. But this is where I'll be doing most of the demo. Um, my password. We get two factor authenticated. Let's see. Yes, it's me. Fantastic. All right. So, so Ronan is a uh, it's basically a front end experience to the Amazon cloud, and it just makes it very sort of um, user friendly and and easy to get up and running um, immediately. So, when you land on this this page, and yeah, we we call it the research cloud. Originally, the research cloud was planned to be sort of a bigger a bigger entity, and that probably will happen in the future. Um, and so there's a bit of yeah confusing confusion about the the naming of things. So Ronin is like the the front end skin. It uses Amazon in the background, AWS, and uh, we originally branded it the Research Cloud, but um, it's it's just sort of one one little piece of uh, our whole research computing sort of infrastructure. In the future, we're hoping to sort of bring all these pieces together: the the high performance computing, the cloud. Um, and virtual research desktops, and also some other parts of compute, edge computing, and bring them all under the umbrella of the research cloud. So that name might evolve. Anyway, when you land on this site of Ronan, 
what you um, are faced with is you normally have one project. I'm part of many projects. And so um, what I'll do is click on uh, this training project. And this whole platform basically lets you spin up your own computer to use um, as you see fit. So the, the beauty of it is that it's, it's very transparent in sort of what's happening. So if you've ever used a cloud platform like AWS or maybe Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud Platform or, or some other cloud provider, um, often the, the costs are kind of confusing. Uh, you, you pay for, you know, you pay for computers, you pay for storage, but there's also lots of other components like the networking infrastructure and the um, and the the connection between storage and uh, and your compute and and um, there might be other services that are wrapped up and it can be really confusing for, for how much you're being charged and what's actually um, costing you money. And so that's why this is kind of cool. So at the moment, this is um, researchers uh, bring their own funding. So you might put put up a thousand dollars and get a, um, and then you have a thousand dollars to spend uh, in this in this platform or so, which gives you a thousand dollars of compute. And I'll describe how much you know a thousand dollars is worth um, as we're going. All right. So yeah, this this dashboard that you land on. Uh, it's very transparent for you know how how much you spent, how much you forecasted, what the actual budget is. Um, so we can see that this is a special project. We have gone over budget, but uh, that's that's okay. There's currently one machine running, and it's costing us three cents per hour uh, for running machines. Um, there's we can see who's part of this project, um, what kind of storage is in inside the project. Um, and then a few other um, objects that we'll talk about as well. All right, and now we'll get straight into it. So if I go click on the menu on the left-hand side, I have all these different um, the, this, these menu options, and I'm currently on the dashboard, but I'm gonna click on machines, and I'll go to machine summary to begin with. This is sort of the main page where all the, all the fun things happen. And um, here I can see that I have one machine running called demo1.sydneyuni.cloud. And it gives me some details about it. It says how, many, um, how much RAM and how many CPUs and what operating system it's using. Uh, and also the, the hard drives attached to it as well. And there's a few different tabs that I can click on um, to see you know, how much this is costing. So it's currently $20 per month. Um, so the, the compute plus the storage so we'll talk about that, um, and then we'll we'll get to the other menus shortly. Now, what what we can do is say we want a brand new machine. You you sit down and you go, look, I've got this all this work to do. My laptop is no good for me. I need to, um, you know, I need a Linux machine or I need a Windows machine because you might be a, a Mac user. Um, I, and I need it. I need a, a large amount of RAM or I need a GPU. Um, so this is where this cloud compute can really um, be beneficial. And you might need it just for, for a week instead of, so it's not worth maybe buying a whole machine just for this one piece of work, or you might need it intermittently over a period of time, or you might have lots of users who, who need to use it at random times. Um, so we'll talk about some of those use cases. But anyway, when you select your new machine, you are faced with this um, this menu of, of choices. Um, currently, we have exposed these operating systems. We can expose more, um, which means if you went onto native AWS, you kind of have thousands of slight configuration options um, with different operating systems and different software installed. Um, so, so if we scroll down a bit, you can see that there's a few more that have pre-configured uh, software already installed on them, and um, you can also make your own. So if you have a specific workflow that requires um, uh, like some uh, Linux Ubuntu 20.04, you might need GPU drivers, uh, you might need uh, a specific version of Python, uh, you can install all those and then roll it up as a package and then uh, expose it here. All right, so I will just pick for now Pick a Windows machine because uh, I already have a Linux one running. So I'll go Windows 2022 and it says um, straight away, it, it says uh, yeah, it's going to be installed on a, a root drive of 30 gigabytes. I can modify this and, and make the root drive bigger. 
um, or and and we'll get to the point where we can add uh, as much storage as we want, basically. But we'll start with Windows. So that's good. All right. And the next, it, it asks for an address. So I've got one called Demo One already. So I'll, I'll call this Demo uh, Demo Win Demo Win. Let's see, that's available. That's good. You can give it a description if you, if you want. You can say this machine is for analysis, uh, not for visualization or something, not for biz. Um, all right. And now the really fun part. So once we give it a name is we click on machine type. And here we have this menu of options. Up the top, it suggests a couple of machines uh, with different compute configurations. So two CPUs, two gigabytes of memory, and the cost to two CPUs, four gigabytes of memory, two CPUs, eight gigabytes of memory. Um, now I'll just point out the names of these, t3.small, t3.medium, t3.large. Um, Amazon has kind of about a hundreds of um, different kind of compute configurations, and they all have these these labels. So uh, t t t one two three four five. Uh, the the number normally gener uh, is related to the the generation, and the uh, so the later generations are five six. I think they're up to about six. Um, and the t is uh, like a specific type of machine. So yeah, th these ones are general purpose. I, it probably stands for something in particular, but I don't know what it is. Um, if we go down, this, this menu expands and we can look at compute optimized machines. So these ones have lots of um, sort of higher ratios of CPUs to, to memory. So C4, 8X large, um, C5s, so on. And you can see it, it starts as, um, I think it starts as this micro, small, medium, large, and then it very quickly goes up to like extra large, 2x large, 4x large, uh, all the way up to uh, 24x large. Um, and you have this thing called metal as well. And they behave a bit differently, but basically you have the entire machine. So the smaller ones, they carve out a piece of the machine for you to use. Um, the metal ones use like the entire machine and you can kind of do different things with it. But anyway, that's a, sort of an advanced thing. Uh, and then you have variations. So C stands for a compute or something, um, but then the C5A, and the A means that they're uh, AMD processors instead of Intel processors. Um, and then I think there's yeah, the AD, which is, uh, that has like a built-in storage as well. So there's all these different things. It, it can be pretty overwhelming and there are tools to pick um, specific, uh, there, there, there are two tools to pick um, help you choose which one you want and also you can choose a small one set everything up and then go i need more compute and just change it straight away so that's the real beauty of it all right so let's uh let's let's scroll back up maybe we'll just get a c5a um let's start with a what a d let's start with a c5a uh start with a large machine okay cool let's scroll back up and yeah you can go through that menu there's uh, there's all the GPU machines as well, and um, and and storage optimized, and and so on. Memory, big memory ones. Uh, okay, so the machine's actually ready to launch now. So if I went up here, I could uh, click launch, and that would start the machine up, um, or I can go to the fourth step and add additional storage. And so here it it gives a menu of um, of you know quick quick select ones for the most commonly used ones. Um, plus you can get down into additional. Uh, options there and it gets, it's very transparent for how much things will cost and yeah whether this is expensive or, or or reasonably priced you know it's um i think it kind of depends how you use it so yeah for for one terabyte of data a month it will cost you about a hundred us dollars i should point out these are in us dollars um and yeah so that's for an ssd drive if you want like a slower hard drive if you um, for, for different reasons, you can get a discount on that. So there's magnetic tape and um, cold storage and everything as well. Uh, however, yeah, some of these things may not be as useful for us um, because we have tools like the Research Data Store. So uh, if you haven't heard of that, that's basically the university's uh, large file storage system. So 
we recommend a lot of people to use the RDS and and sort of move data to Ronin to for analysis and then move it back to the RDS rather than taking advantage of the uh, sort of the magnetic tape storage and cold storage. Um, yeah, but it might make sense anyway. So. So I won't, I won't add any additional storage. I'll, I'll just use that configuration and I will click launch. And um, for Windows, I, I need a password. Uh, so I'll enter my pa password. Um, I will just, so th these, these machines, um, let me just write a password. I'll go password. Okay. So, these machines, um, the security of them, when thinking about passwords and everything, uh, these you should think of these machines almost as disposable. So that's it. I've now launched that machine. I click show me my machine. And here we go. And it goes back to my, my menu here and it's booting up. Awesome. So, so that's the one I already had, this Linux operating system. And here's the um, the the Windows one over here, and um, it, it normally takes about five minutes or so for it to for it to boot up and come online. There is a slight difference to how you connect to uh, the Linux machines versus the Windows machines. Um, generally, you use SSH, uh, which is a protocol to connect to Linux machines, and for Windows, you use RDP, um, which is a, a different protocol. Um, Alrighty, so whilst that one's booting up, I can I can connect to this one and just see what it looks like. It's basically a machine. So let me think about this. Um, okay, now there's a few ways to connect to it. Ronin provides a service um, called Ronin Link. So if I click that, can I open up? Um, open. Yes, open link. Cool. Oh, okay, good. Oh, yeah, I already had it in there. Okay, so th this is, is Ronin Link. It, it's basically a little, um, a fairly low key tool uh, that just lets you um, see these machines uh, without having to go onto the platform. And basically you, you put the address in uh, the username. So the username comes by default. You can modify that later if you need to. Um, and then I haven't spoken about it yet, but with Linux machines, you use something called a, an SSH key. So when I set up this the Linux machine previously, I had to generate an SSH key um, to connect to it. And then I can just uh, I can click this button and it will um, it will give me a console. And, and so now I'm ready to uh, um, you know I'm connected to this remote machine. I can do whatever I want with it. I um, can yes it, I have pseudo privileges, pseudo apt yeah, Python, um, oh, app, app, install, I can yeah, install whatever I like on it um, and I can throw it away and, and uh, get it back if I need to. Uh, so that's kind of the, the cool thing about it. Now, anyone who has, now that this machine's been created, anyone with uh, university credentials, so you have to be on the university network, um, and anyone with that SSH key can access it. So that, like, yeah, think about that in terms of the security that you might require um, and how this machine is shared. You can now set up accounts and, and run this machine as a remote Linux server if you want. Um, and so you can do all that kind of thing. But yeah, you just kind of keep that in mind that you have full control over it. And uh, you can also, the, the cool thing about, um, Ronin link is there's a few options here. If I click connect to machine, uh, it gives me sort of more options. If um, I had R Studio or Jupyter notebooks, um, I can connect to the, those very easily um, because when you're using a remote machine and you want to look at a graphical user interface, that can be quite complicated. Uh, so Ronin link sort of makes that easier by having these one click buttons. And uh, one of the easy things is getting a desktop. So if I click desktop, um, oh, and then there we go. So my desktop is, is firing up. Um, th that takes about also about five minutes configuration, uh, but it does it all automatically. And if you've ever looked at the documentation for how to create a remote uh, user interface like this, it's, re it's like, it's super annoying. 
Um, so that, that's why Ronin is kind of cool. But I'm on that same machine now. And I, I again, I have full um, full root access. I have um, access to a web browser and whatever. Um, and I can click and install applications and run them uh, as I would if I was sitting at my desk. Now, yeah, it's not, even though you have to be on the network to connect to it, um, one of the disadvantages is it's not within the Sydney Uni uh, like network ecosystem. So you can't like mount an RDS drive. Uh, that That's basically the biggest biggest hurdle I find with these. Uh, but you can use you can use different protocols to still transfer data um, between them. Okay, cool. So I can now I can either log out or I can I think if I power that off it will um, it will turn off the machine. Oh, okay, no, it, it won't actually let me. So um, okay. And I, I think I saw something in the chat, you know, about Ubuntu 18 super old. Yeah, it is. Um, I think they had newer versions and you can even upgrade the machine once you've got it um, set up and running. So, okay. All right, cool. So that's logged in there. We can see. Okay, and now let's let's go have a look at our, um, our Windows one. So, um, this one has, I think it's um, should, should be ready to go. If I click RDP, uh, this asks me to download it. Shall I just download it to my desktop? And so this uses a different protocol. Again, I think we can use Ronin link to connect to it. Um, oh, that didn't work. So let me, so R RDP requires, just like I use the command line to use SSH to connect to uh, Linux. Windows, to connect to Windows instances, you need a specific RDP tool. I think it comes probably pre-installed if you have a Windows machine. On Mac, there's a very um, useful tool called um, Microsoft Remote Desktop. So, so that's uh, nice and easy. And um, on, I, I'm, on, I'm on Linux, um, which has this thing called uh, remote desktop client. So, oh, it's asking. so I can just add my, where is that file? Um, uh, I think if I, oh, sorry, I'll just find that file that I downloaded. Um, this one, and if I just drag it in, will that work? There we go. Um, yeah, that, that file I downloaded, it's basically a text file that has the, the name of this to connect to. So it's it's nothing too exciting, but all, all it is, you need the, the server address, which we, we set up. And now if I connect to it, all right, let's see if it works. Uh, I have to remember that password that I created before. See how it did, domain, good. Ah, okay, so I think this is a bug actually. Uh, I thought this was a result, but basically you have to, uh, if you want to use this, you have to change the password straight away for Windows, which is uh, kind of annoying. But it, it, it's a good demo uh, case for, you know, say you've forgotten the password to this machine. Um, you can come in here and have uh, God privileges and just reset the password. So, and you can change the username uh, if you want, I think, possibly. Let's try it. It requires a very complex password. Um, okay. Windows password. Done. Okay, let's try again. So now if I go back to my this one and log in. Yeah, see, it's a weird bug. Like, um, you always just have to change, reset the password straight away. Um, but anyway, I now have a, a Windows machine, and um, yeah, this is setting up configuration and everything. And then I can I can install whatever I want on this and and use it as I would, um, as I would normally. So uh, yeah, you can you can do all, all whatever you like on this as you would um, on on your other Windows machines. All right, and yeah, you can make it full screen so it looks better and everything, but I'll, I'll wait for that um, for sharing reasons. Uh, okay, so 
Now, we can do fun things like resizing the machine. So say, okay, I've, I've set my computer up and now I need to run some analysis that requires, you know, 10 GPUs, actually not 10, four GPUs, I think is the most, and 96 CPUs. We can do that. So we can uh, go here. I have to turn it off. Um, let's do my Linux one. So I'll, I'll shut this one down. Let's turn this off. And whilst that's turning off, you can see um, this, this cost uh, when it turns off will will basically go to go to zero, so that's an important mindset to have um, when you have when you have these machines. They can be really cheap if you only use them for you know a, a few minutes or, or an hour or so. Um, so finish it because uh, that that will go to zero. And keep in mind you always pay for storage. So if you have storage, whether it's filled or not, for this type of storage, it will um it will always be costing you. Uh, costing you money. So, so yeah, so it's changing the mentality of, of how you work. All right, we'll, we'll come back to configuring that. Now, were there any, um, any, any questions that people had at the moment? Um, I just saw, oh yeah, Ubuntu 18 is near the end of life. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so as we saw, there were there are a few other options, and we should probably expose the more more recent ones, twenty two, and um, so we've had this platform for a couple of years now. Uh, okay, so that's finished. So let's um let's reconfigure it, so we can we come back to this page basically, and yeah, so now say we need a GPU, you can go down and pick. Uh, I think the the biggest ones are the V one hundreds. Um, we, we I, I should point out, we are in the Sydney, um, uh, what's it called, um, location. So a AWS has all these sort of different uh, locations around the world, and we are in, uh, in the Sydney region. And so that means we have access to whatever machines are in the Sydney region. Um, but if, if you need access to something, a, a machine that's not in the Sydney region, then we, we don't have access to it through Ronan. All right, yeah, so you can come and pick like a, a huge uh, machine that will cost $21 an hour, um, which is pretty expensive, $15,000 a month, um, but it is quite formidable. So you can can do that. We'll just pick a, a nice simple one with a, a Tesla K80 on there. I'll click change machine type and that's it. So I can start it back up and well, once it's configured, there we go. So it's changed and um, and I start it back up and we can connect to it again. Well, oh, okay, no. So it said there are no um none of those um machine types. So that does happen from time to time, especially if you pick more uh sort of bespoke configurations, pick something easier. Um let's do a C4 large. How about that one? Okay, let's try again. Yeah, it's Okay, so that will start up. And while that's starting up, I'll just show you, um, uh, now it says that it's running already. I don't I don't think it's, it normally takes a bit longer than that, but we can, we can see and have a look. Let's connect with um, a, oh yeah, no, so it's, it's still starting up. Even though it says it's running, it, it normally takes a few minutes. Um, all right, so over here on the left-hand side, there's a bunch of other um, options here. Uh, we have the drive storage page. So you can, um, what's neat is that you can, can you can run a machine and then be like, oh, I need like a completely different machine, but I want to keep this drive. So you can just detach the drive. Uh, you can back up the drive and you might make a copy of it or a fork of it if you want to do some weird experiments. Um, and so you can sort of manage your storage separately to com compute or you can kind of manage them uh, together. So you can see that they're, they're currently attached to these machines, um, but I can I can do things like uh, change the size of it. I can detach it as well, uh, and then I can do more things with those drives. And yeah, you might want to back things up if you've got a nice configuration that you like. And uh, what else is interesting? So um, there's this other type of storage which is known as object storage. And if you're familiar with AWS, um, this is called S3 which uh, I forget what that S3 stands for, some 
I think it's something cubed or something. Anyway, um, so S3 storage, it, it's basically this one you only pay for what you you consume. So as you uh, add files to the to the drive, um, it, it will get larger and larger, but you only pay for um, for what's actually on there. And it's significantly more cheaper than um, than like SSD or, or hard drive storage, um, like physically attached, well not physically, but attached to your your compute. Um, however, yeah, it behaves kind of differently. So this is good for, I don't know, things like um, maybe certain databases or if you've got lots of um, files that you just want to copy uh, for, for a little bit of time or you've got lots of output files or something, um, then the S3 buckets can be really useful in some circumstances. Uh, but yeah, the, the reading and writing of them is a little bit different to, to how you normally just read and write without thinking about it. Um, but it is, is an option. All right, and we'll talk about packages too. So say you come and you're, you, you've got a group of 10 people and um, we just set one up the other day. We need a Power BI. And so none of us have Windows computers here. So we, um, we need machines with Windows. So we, um, we created a, uh, a, a Windows configuration and people need Power BI, you know, once every six months or so. And so you can come over here, click on the options and click package machine and give it a, a new name, Power BI. And this has Windows and Power BI installed. Um, and then click Create Machine Package. And then it will reboot your machine and it basically turns it into a, um, into a package. And when you then create a new machine, you have the option of using that one, that template that I've just created. So it's pretty neat like at how sort of straightforward that is. Again, if you're doing this on the AWS console, I'm tempted to show you it. It's, it's quite intimidating. There's so many options. Um, so Ronin just makes it really simple for us. Okay, so um, our other machine should be should be up and running now. Oh, that, that one timed out. That's okay. I'll uh, connect to it again. Yeah, I, I, I recommend using the, the Ronin link one. There we go. So our new machine, it's the same machine. It has the same data on there. Um, it remembers my my previous commands already at the um the old um the old yeah I've got my um Python already installed. If I do something like top, I can see now that I probably have more memory. So I have more memory, I have more CPUs um than I did before. So and then I can run my sort of deeper analysis now that I have a bigger machine. Uh, okay, anything else to mention here? So we've ma made a package. I think that takes a little bit of time. Um, we can try and go and make, make a new machine with the package that we've created. Now, if I just go to here, pre-configured. Oh yeah, there's our package that we created. Oh yeah, so it's still pending. But basically you click that button and then you can have this um, template. And this template, it's fairly cheap to keep. Uh, I think it's, it, it does retain uh, the data that's on your machine, but it turns into S3 storage. So if you've only got like an operating system and some uh, things installed, uh, then then it's it's fairly cheap to to basically uh, keep all the time. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. But yeah, then we can select that image and it will launch our machine. Uh, and then of course we can go and uh, reconfigure it to how we like. Alrighty, and what else is there? So I think that's probably everything. Like it's it's a fairly nice platform. We can go back to our dashboard and see how much things are costing us now and um, what we're expected to cost. So yeah, we've got two out of two machines running. We're now charging twenty three cents an hour. Now there's a um yeah so the the, the main the, the way to access the, the uh, the machine, uh, the Ronin at the moment, it's fairly um, ad hoc. So we we have like a, a, a starter, um, we have a, a, a project initiation form. Let me find that. Sorry, I should have had this earlier. Let me just grab it and think of any questions that you might have as well. Um,
Oops. This one, will this work? Might make me log in. I'm on a private window. Um, oh yeah, I can just do this. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so so this is the um the project in initiation form. If you um if you uh want to start a oh actually that could have been maybe that's the one you want. I think I'm looking at the that different. Be the same. Okay. So I'm looking at my view of it. Uh, okay. So ba basically, um, uh, in this, uh, you, you give your project ID the same as RD, uh, your RDS project. So that way we, we keep them sort of tied to an RDS project um, and give it the same title as an RDS project. So if you're not familiar with that, that's what's available in, um, in, in Dash R, the research dashboard. So for instance, I, I have... Um, here we go. I'm, I'm, I've got the tra training project. So my my project shortcode is training. And um, yeah, it's called HPC training under informatics core research facility. So that would be my project title and my project ID is training. Um, and then project description, you can say, you know, I want to use these machines for, for these purposes. Um, I, and here's my workflow. I need this particular software. Um, and then you can set your the admin um, person and then plus a, a, whoever else needs access to, to the Ronin platform. Um, and we, we generally have free trials. So uh, up to about $100 um, for you to sort of test it out and see if it's appropriate. And then if you have funding, it's bring, be, bring your own funding normally. There are credits available through Amazon directly, um, Amazon Research Credits. Uh, which a few people have used in the past and been successful at um, getting, which can then be applied to, to Ronin if you want to use that. Yeah, so the AWS um, research credits, um, I think this is the right page. Uh, you, you can apply for these and hopefully be successful for up to, yeah, a few thousand dollars. And um, anything else? Yeah, we, we say how much you... You use it for how, how long you want the project for it and so on and um and that's it so basically you fill out this form and then a human has to go and and turn it on and set up your project so it, it does take a little bit of time but once you've been in the system in the Ronin uh, system then then it's fairly easy to add and uh take away users and get more fun get more funds and everything if you feel like oh yeah this is great let's put more money on it and normally you pay up front i think you can do it both ways so it's via journal transfer. You can pay up front, or you can, um, or you can sort of be charged at the end of each each month. So there's a couple of ways uh, that can be do it, that can be done, uh, and yeah. So that, that's basically how to, to get onboarded if you if you care to be, and um, okay. And yeah, the question about how much does it cost? Let's let's go back over here. Oops, not that one. Let's go to this tab. Yeah. So I've got logged out. Um, so when your machine is off, it's costing you nothing for the compute. So that's free. Um, but it's costing you money for storage. And that's um, so let's go to my machines. Yeah, it always costs you money for storage. And then there's also the S3 storage. They're, they're basically the three ways you get charged uh, in Ronin. Um, so yeah, I'll turn this one off and then we'll see that it costs nothing. While that's turning off, I'll go, I'll go back to my dashboard because I think that shows us our S3 storage. Um, yeah, and the, the like the SSD that can kind of, you know, if you have a, a a terabyte of storage, which is, isn't huge, and that that'll cost you, you know, hundred dollars a month, and then you leave it for a few months. Like you can eat through your budget, um, just quietly like that. So it's important to sort of clean up things. Um, but yeah, you can see how much your your objects are are costing you, and and your backups and packages. The all these things are. Uh, S3 storage, but um, yeah, they're, they're in Ronin, they're sort of 
um, differentiated a bit so you can understand what they are, but you get charged at the S3 rate. Now to calculate things, there is uh, some really good um, the AWS ca calculator. Th this is a little bit intimidating, I think the first time you use it, but it, I use it all the time now. Um, I'll put this in the chat as well. And this can give you an idea of, of what things are going to cost. And you can kind of use um, use the Rona interface to, to estimate things as well and figure out what machines you might need. Um, so you click create service. And then the main ones that you're going to use are EC2. So that, that's what a virtual machine is. So those compute machines, they're called EC2 for whatever reason, Elastic Compute um, Cloud compute, elastic cloud compute, that's why it's EC2. Uh, and you can then set up your machine to, to come up with an estimate. So there are lots of options there. It, it is a bit confusing this page, but um, you can get used to it. Um, or you can just ask me. And you can also add the the other other one that we use is EBS, which is the storage. So Amazon Elastic Block Storage. Um, so yeah, again, if you don't know these terms, like it, it can be overwhelming and confusing, but you can get a good estimate for how much these things will cost. Uh, and the other one is the find a service called S3, um, which is, oh, there we go, simple storage service. And it was SSS, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, so those, those three things um, are the main ones. Um, another really good website is um, this one. Sorry, I'll just... That's my bookmarks. Um, oh, where is it? Uh, oops. Okay, let's go AWS instance comparison. Uh, oh, this one. Yeah. I use this page a lot to figure out, you know, which instance I might actually need as well. Uh, so you say, okay, I need I need 64 gigabytes and I need a uh let's go, I need a um I need a GPU. So let's add a GPU. I need one GPU, I need 64 gigabytes. What's the cheapest one that that we've got? So there we go, the Linux one. Uh we're on demand. That's what what our rates are. Um and so I'd pick, you know, that one there. Although I don't think that one's available in the Sydney region. So yeah, that, that's a really good website, I think, for seeing what these instances actually are and what they contain and comparing them side by side. Now, um, as I say, there's, there's a couple other charges to be aware of. Um, in, in AWS, you get charged for moving data. So that's called data ingress if it's going into Amazon and data egress if it's leaving Amazon. Um, but within Ronin, we actually get egress fees waived. I think that you get billed for it, but then it gets refunded. So it's something to just keep in mind. Um, but so that, that's a nice little perk as well. Um, okay, so I think that's kind of uh, everything I had to say. I'll just uh, let's let's just go to um, AWS. Um, let me. Sorry, I'm just on another page for a second. Sign in. Nate, there was um there's an interesting discussion on the chat. Um uh Meredy asked about automating a spin-up and um another point was um previously it was there was a discussion about how do you actually move data to S3 um and the transfer rates and it may be worth mentioning how do you actually do that and uh, or possibly the SDKs or, or some other tools that you use for that purpose. Okay, cool. So so number one, um, yeah, automating things is uh, fairly easy. That There's a tab over here. Uh, it's got, it looks like a little clock and you can set up this smart schedule. So you can say when you want the machine to turn on and when you want it to turn off. Um, which is very neat. And so that's very handy to set, um, especially if you forget to turn it off. So you just say like every day at 6 p.m. turn it off. Um, so that that one's nice. Now, the next one, how do you actually like move data? Um, yeah, there's there's a few different tools depending on whether you're using Linux machines, Windows machines, 
or you're on uh, a Mac and wanting to move data into the ecosystem. Um, but basically the terms SCP, SFTP, um, they're probably the big ones uh, to transfer data. So, so the, the, there's a tools like FileZilla, which we, um, which we use a lot for, for high performance computing uh, in the high performance computing training and RDS training. And we recommend this one uh, mostly because it's it, it's free and it's um it is also on um it is on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And so yeah, ba basically you can so this is FileZilla, and you you put the the host name in uh, username and password in the port, and you can also so with these machines you you need to connect with an SSH key, um, and so you can also add that within FileZilla as well. So, and then if, you, if you're if you on your machine and you want to move that to um, uh, move data between S3 and your uh, local machine, what, what was that called, Tom? Probably the, the one to use is the AWS CLI um, is the, the command line interface. And that's probably the easiest for moving data back and forth uh, between S3, but there's also options to like mount the S3 drive, and then it will kind of behave as a as a normal drive. And also do it programmatically inside things like Python using Boto Core and things like that. They're all provided by Amazon. There'll be links for them online. Yeah. So yeah, there's 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 quite a a few options, I guess. Um, and Anyway, I just thought I'd show you this. This is what it looks like when you log into uh, native Amazon, um, and it like it's it's fairly overwhelming, I, I think. And if we wanted to do the same thing that we uh, just did before, you'd have to go to EC two and then um, and then click a bunch of options. And there's you know a thousand different options here. Um, launch instances, I think the same as creating a new machine. Um, but then here you can see it, it looks kind of similar to, to uh, Ronan. Um, got all those different options there. You can browse sort of thousands of of um, of machines there. Uh, if, if there is one a, a particular image that you want uh, on the Ronin interface, you can just ask for it, and then um, the the administrators can add, add it there. You can select, select your instance type, which is the compute. Um, and yeah, so there's all these network settings and everything that you is kind of taken care of for you, um, storage and some advanced options as well. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you, you can do things through AWS, but uh, it's a bit, a bit more confusing. Um, but if you're, I don't know, more of a power user and you want more control over the whole environment and you have a corporate credit card, then maybe that's, um, that's the option for you. Or, or you can use, you know, any other platform as well. Um, you know, AWS is, is is fine, but the other ones are too. Um, the Ronin is cleared for uh, not highly protected data, just protected data. So, so it is cleared for that. Um, so keep that in mind. Okay. Um, yeah. Any any other questions? Otherwise, I may have um, run out of things to say for for this hour. All right. Well, yeah, if there's no further questions, and thanks everyone for coming along. Uh, this is our first training session, I think, of, of the year. We we have a um introduction to the Artemis HPC uh next week and also the research data storage. So if you want to learn more about those, especially if you're new to the university, um, yeah, and, and just interested in general sort of compute, then the HPC one can be quite uh, useful for not just our local HPC, but any sort of remote Linux server. Um, it's also good just for learning Linux too. Uh, and if you want to learn more about how the, the research data storage kind of works across the university, then come to those um, next week. And I think we've got Hacky Hour next month in a few weeks time. And um, yeah, check our training calendar for, for a bunch of um, uh, different options of our uh, different type of training. And please, if you have a moment, uh, fill out this survey I've just posted in the chat, uh, which will give you um, uh, an opportunity to provide your feedback. I think we'll, we'll send a follow-up email anyway with that link too.
So thank you very much, everyone, and farewell. Have a have a good rest of the day and rest of the year.